is the most wonderful time of the year. And if you asked me when I was about six or seven, I probably would have agreed. I remember every year rushing down three, three hours before I normally wake up and looking at all the wonderful presents that <clears throat> Santa left me. <laughs> when it's time, I shred open every box with my name on it and I'd run around the house playing with every little toy that my heart desired. And yet, my parents would be baffled every year when eventually my toys would become old news, as they say. Can anyone relate with that? Yes. I've often thought about how crazy most children of that age are when they neglect their things just after they've received them. And then I think about how people do the very same thing when they're older. I mean, how many of us have bought a brand new iPhone only for a new one to come out a year later? Or bought new clothes, not just because the old ones didn't fit anymore, but because the new ones were cooler or trendier. It seems almost silly, doesn't it? As a matter of fact, Jesus warns us against this very trap in Luke 12, 15. He says, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for life does not consist on an abundance of possessions. There's a fundamental problem with being so enthralled with the world and that your life does not consist of things. Not that you owning a phone is bad per se, but an immersion in stuff pulls us from an immersion in God, who's the only source of life that we can draw from. There's a reason that Jesus speaks so strongly about the cost of following him. He says in Matthew 16, 24, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. That may seem like an overly dramatic statement at first, but when you read verses 25 and 26, it makes sense why this is so. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his own soul? Or, or what shall a man give in return for his soul? That means that we as Christians are called to pursue God with our whole being even to the point of taking up the cross. It's, it may seem kind of extreme, but Jesus says in John 6, 35, I am the bread of life. He who believes in me shall not hunger, and he who believes in me shall not thirst. You see, Jesus is everything worth living for. But often we leave Jesus aside in search of something better. But there is nothing better God provided us with the greatest gift that we could think of. Imagine this. If someone gives you $100,000 to do renovations on a house, but instead of doing those renovations on your house, you spend that money on a hotel room you're staying at for a night, it'd be pretty strange. In the same way, the fact that God gives his son to die for us, that we may have life, and we as Christians who have that truth don't pursue God with our whole being, you've got to admit, is also pretty strange. I mean, what do you think would be better? Food is awesome. But the bread of life is better than any food. And scrolling through Twitter may pass the time, but flipping through Proverbs may change your life. <laughs> and a boy or girl you may be chasing may be great, but there is a greater God who's chasing after you. If God is actually better than anything in this world, and especially since God is wanting us, then why would we spend our time, money, and efforts on anything else? Do you know what that means? If you want to follow Jesus, you have to give up the world. Even though that seems like a lot, what God has for you is greater than anything else you could ever hope to gain. So go and pursue things at last, rather than things that will eventually become a hunk of plastic. Like Jim Elliott once said, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain that which he cannot lose. Woo!